Chris Vick, this is your Thursday, is it? The motherfucking future yet. Update. Crystalline materials are constantly being evaluated in the quest to find materials that exhibit exploitable novel behaviors. All of our modern technology is based around our application of solid state physics to control states at nanoscale doped silicon transistors. This is achieved by creating atomic imperfections to control electrons we control specific tendencies for charge movement at interfaces of differently doped silicon regions. In an article entitled Extraordinary Plasticity of an Inorganic Semiconductor in Darkness, published in Science Mag, an interesting discovery was made in the mechanical properties of zinc sulfide crystal. Under lighting conditions, in the test, the semiconductor catastrophically failed. You could classify this as a failure in a brittle material underloading. In pure darkness, along a specific axis, the material plastically deformed as much as 45% without failing. This, a squishy twist on the sometimes brittle behavior of inorganic semiconductors. In subspace radio news, quantum computing is a hot topic right now. However, many questions exist to the feasibility and the generation of a general purpose computational system. Hardware algorithm implementations exist. But this isn't the only spooky action going on. At a distance. I said it. Telecommunications technology has functionalized photon dynamics, and some processes have been exploited now for some time. Interesting development in the world of entertainment. In an atom, the calcium ion, here the quantum node, and its emitted photon, Entanglement was preserved while the photon was subject to quantum frequency conversion and converted to a telecom photon. It is significant as entanglement was preserved throughout the conversion and specifically to a wavelength currently utilized in telecommunication fiber optic systems. Now, the rant of the week, the Fermi Paradox. It must be a paradox! It's not a paradox. Human hubris often skews the conclusions we draw from similar dynamically, but not precisely, equivocal data. It's reasonable to conclude that higher probabilities exist in the attempt to find and contact life in our own galaxy as compared to elsewhere. State the size of the Milky Way. Ah, oh, fuck. The approximate physical region of matter we have to analyze. It's considerably smaller than the 14.5 billion light year bubble of space existing around us. Comparable to the scope of time, our planet has existed recognizably for say 4 or 5 billion years. That's a third of what we, from expansion theory, which don't get me started. Consider the lifetime of the universe. Life could have existed right next door. But if it was a billion years ago, it doesn't Another looming element of an assumption is our ability to detect sufficiently advanced civilization. We were using vacuum tubes less than a hundred years ago. We don't really understand quantum mechanics, at least to an extent which it could be usually integrated with, say, special general relativity. Let's assume every single observed system within 40 light years had a pre-industrial, like humans were for, like, the vast majority of our existence, bipedal, dinosaur, bird sapien populations. Oh, wait. We can't detect them. It's clearly a paradox. I don't think the Gene Roddenberry density of bipedal intelligent species coexisting in similar periods of technological development and fairly reasonable physical proximity to each other is a good model for us to determine the existence of life in our universe. As the emergence of highly advanced organisms occur, it will be inherently rare, and overwhelmingly, the lifetime of these species are not probable to ever coincide. In this, I hope I'm wrong because I promised my brother that he'd see an alien before we died. That was like 25 years ago, and I don't want to be a liar. This has been your Thursday. Is it the motherfucking future yet? Update.